Hello everybody and welcome to today's Tech Hub webinar. My name is Amy and I'm a Program Manager at Enterprise Nation and I'm very happy to welcome you here today. So for those of you who are joining an Enterprise Nation webinar for the first time, we are a vibrant community of small businesses and business advisors that exist to shortcut your route to trusted business support. So today's webinar is part of Tech Hub. So it's a collaboration between Cisco, Google, Sage, and Vodafone Business, and it's been built by Enterprise Nation. So it offers an accessible solution to support small businesses to leverage the technology that they need to run and grow their business. So if you haven't already signed up to Tech Hub, you'll take a short diagnostic questionnaire and then receive personalized recommendations. And we're also offering free events such as this one every single month designed to help you to implement new processes and tools to support you on your business journey. So in this webinar, we are joined by our speaker, Nuno Soros. So he has over 20 years of leadership experience and as the author also of Digital Transformation, his expertise spans leadership, management, productivity, marketing, sales and much more as well. But having work, walked in the shoes of a business owner, he understands the challenges and frustrations that technology can pose um, for small business owners, and he supports businesses to accelerate their success. So in this webinar, we're going to be exploring lots of practical strategies about how to boost your productivity in the digital age. So we'll be discovering a structured framework for the week. Um, which will enhance productivity and efficiency, and also um, discussing how you can create your ideal week every week and finding those digital tools that align with productivity strategies and how you can also implement them effectively. So very exciting session today. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please post them in the Q&A chat function and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. This webinar is also recorded, so we'll send a follow-up email to everyone later today, which will have the recording in and also further resources as well. Um, but without much further ado, welcome Nuno. I'll let you get started on your talk. Thank you and good morning, um, everyone. Um, so why I'm here today talking about productivity? Well, my journey started in my early 20s in the corporate world. So I start as a computer programmer, then I become a database administrator, and eventually I moved to IT support. Uh, in my 30s, I embarked on my entrepreneurial, entrepreneur journey, um, uh, founding and selling multiple tech companies. Uh, fast forward 20 years, and I'm thinking a new challenge as business coach. While I'm new to coaching space, my uh, extensive experience in running companies and do IT consulting uh, with business owners taught me the importance of productivity uh, in achieving success. So why are we struggling uh, with productivity? Let's, uh, let's look at the problem. Uh, why do we often feel overwhelmed, stressed, and prone to procrastination? The answer lies in the constant barrage of distractions we face every day. Uh, if you resonate uh, with one of these feelings, you are not alone, uh, and that's a sign that you may need some, some guidance. So distractions are the primary reason behind our productivity troubles. Uh, our modern devices designed to keep us connected also, we inundate, inundate us with notifications and alerts from emails and messaging to social media updates and news alerts. Our brains are simply haven't evolved to cope with all this constant uh, a sort of information. Um, we live in this always on world where connectivity is constant and expectations are very high. Um, in average, an office worker receives over 100 emails per day, spends between one to four hours in communication tools and attends 15 to 20 hours of meetings every week. Uh, also, the rise of remote and hybrid, worker, uh, hybrid working um, blurs the line between our work time and, and, and personal time, uh, makes things even more uh, difficult. So, what are the consequences of this constant state of distraction? Studies show that it leads to increased stress, anxiety, and depression. Individuals experience these mental health challenges 
often, often struggle with memory, cognitive function, and problem-solving abilities, leading to errors and accidents. Productivity dips, engagement declines, and both individuals, companies, and governments suffer financially. Well, the good news is there's a solution, and it's not that daunting as it may seem. While there is no magic fix or special tool to instantly boosting productivity, there are a few techniques and frameworks that when applied with change in mindset and habits, we can make significant differences. So let's explore how we can leverage these strategies and enhance productivity to achieve our goals. So distractions are at the heart of our productivity struggles. Let's delve into an intriguing concept from Nir Ayao in his book, Indestructible. So the opposite of distraction isn't simply concentration or focus, it's traction. Distraction comes from the Latin word distrae, where dis means away, and traere means to draw or to pull. So literally, distraction means to be drawn away or pulled away from something. So think of this like when you are distracted, your attention is being pulled away from what you are supposed to be focusing on, whether it's work, study, or any other task. This pulling away can happen due to various factors like notifications, social media, or even internal thoughts and worries. So the opposite of this isn't just focusing art or try to block out distractions. Instead, it's about proactively, proactively choose where do you want to direct your attention, create traction. So traction is the action of pulling yourself towards the things you intend to do, the tasks that are meaningful and aligned with your goals. Um, so this, this gentleman called Herbert Simon says something that I think is quite interesting, that a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. So while distractions pulls you away from your goals, traction will pull you towards them. The key is to be intentional about where you invest your attention, ensuring that it aligns with your objectives. So by understanding this distinction and actively seeking for traction, you can navigate the distractions and stay focused on things that really matter to you. So now let's explore the techniques to help you to create traction time blocking. So this method involves dividing your day into blocks of time de dedicated to specific tasks or activities. It's not about rigid uh, scheduling, but about being intentional with your actions, ensuring that dedicated periods for focus work. These blocks should be ideally at least 30 meters long, with most people finding that one hour is the optimal time. Other concept is deep working versus shallow work. So this is discussed by a guy called Cole Newport on his book, uh, Deep Work. So for, for, for Carl, deep work refers to focus, uninterrupted work that challenges your brain and leads to valuable outcomes. These tasks need your full attention and usually take time to be executed. executed. These are type of tasks that urge you to create traction and avoid distractions at all costs. Some examples of these tasks can be like writing a detailed or complex uh, proposal, analyzing and compiling data to write a report, thinking and developing a marketing st strategy. So you get idea. In contrast, shallow work, it's about routine tasks that don't demand much mental effort, effort and can be done while distracted or not focused. These include activities like replying to emails, administrative tasks, or attending meetings. So how do we effectively implement time blocking? First, it's, um, it doesn't matter which type of calendar system do you use. You can use a digital calendar like Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, it doesn't matter, or a normal pen and paper calendar. Just stick with what you are comfortable and what you are used to, to use. You can apply time blocking 
just for your work day or also incorporate personal time as well. Um, something that is very important is for remote and hybrid workers, workers establish that boundary between their work and their personal time is, it can be challenging. Um, so making sure that those workers create the blocks where they are working, it's even more important than someone with a normal nine to five. So those ones make sure that they create the two, three or four blocks that they have when they are working. Um, so starting with time blocking can be a little bit challenging in the beginning. So one of the things that can be difficult is figuring out how to group the tasks in blocks because the aim here is not create a block per task, but group tasks into blocks and then work out those tasks in that period. So for example, if you create a block in your calendar for emails and social media, what you're going to do in that period of time is you're going to reply to emails, create tasks from your emails, organize your inbox. And we have a little bit more information about that later. Then go to your social media platforms, reply to any messages, like or interact with any posts um, that you find that they are important or interesting, connecting with people to grow your network and maybe do your daily post. So this can be a block of shallow work for one hour or an hour and a half, depending on the time do you need to do this. Other thing that is challenging in the beginning is estimate how much time do, you, do we need to make these things. So I said like one hour to do this, maybe one hour is not enough. Maybe you need an hour and a half or two hours. So getting to that um, feeling of knowing how much time do you need can be a little bit challenging. But again, I will teach you some techniques um, later uh, how you can deal um, with, with these things. Other thing that is important is um, doing the deep work and the shallow work. So deep work demands focus from you and we are all different. And some people can focus better in the morning, others in the afternoon, and even some in the evenings. So discovering where is your optimal time for deep work can be a little bit challenging and you probably need to try and error a, a few things um, throughout uh, your weeks to figure out when are you more productive to do deep work. Other concept that I would like to introduce to you is a startup and a shutdown process. So as I said, time blocking is not about being rigid, but it's about being intentional. Uh, and by having these two procedures um, helps you to give that flexibility and maintain the focus. So think of this like a pre-flight check uh, for pilots. You know, before they fly, they will do a couple of checks. When they land, they will also do a couple of checks. Um, so what you should do on your startup routine is when you start your day, just review your calendar, check if everything there is feasible, if it makes sense, um, or if you need to make some changes and add additional tasks. So adjust as you need. So for example, if you just receive an email from your boss last night at 10 p.m. asking you to do something, you can go and adjust uh, those things um, in your calendar to accommodate this task from, from your boss. Then the shutdown process is something even more important than the startup. Um, because um, our brains doesn't cope very well with open tasks. Um, it, you know, you probably wonder sometimes that you just went to bed and thinking about an email that you haven't replied. So that is your brain uh, not being very, uh, you know, happy with the fact that you left a task open or incomplete. So the, the aim of this shutdown is to make sure that you... Uh, Tell your brain that don't worry, that we can um, we can work on those things later. So what I want is I want you to review um, all the tasks that that you have open that you haven't completed on that day. 
make a list of those tasks and then make an action of what you need to do to complete those tasks. Then go to your calendar for the next day and add the block to sort out those things. So that way you are just signaling your brain that everything is under control and you can, you know, no worry about these things. Um, so for you to be comfortable with time blocking, um, I would like you to introduce you to another technique that is daily logging. So daily logging is not journaling. This should be rapid logging of your tasks uh, that you are doing throughout the day. So again, it doesn't matter what tools do you use. You can use a normal notepad or you can use a digital note-taking app. What is important is in the beginning of the day, you open a new page, you put the date on the, on the top, and when you start a task, just write down the time, a very short description of what you are doing, and that's it. When you finish that task, you just put the time in the end and you move on to the next one. If for some reason, when you are doing a task, you are interrupted and you need to start another task, just close that task with the time, move on to the new one, repeat the process. And when you are back to the time that you were being interrupted, start again, but make like a visual cue that you are coming back from another one. Just make like an arrow or a symbol connecting the two tasks together. So that will help you later to understand how many times are you interrupted and what's the impact of that in terms of, of, of time. Um, I use a, a, an app called Notion to do my note taking, but again, it's up to you. You can use any other app. Sorry, I've been a few things. <laughs> so um, what I would like you to do is do this daily logging for at least four weeks, uh, ideally eight. Why? Because you are going to have recurrent tasks that you can do them weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. So the four weeks periods allow you to cover those maybe the way the eight weeks allows you to make sure that you cover different recurrent tasks. Um, so by, by doing this, uh, it will help you to create that ideal week. Um, and, and the key is to be consistent. So make sure that you do this daily, that you record the times so that you can have a better idea of how much time do you need to execute things. And then, and then also, um, to categorize the, the, the tasks. So making sure that you can group the tasks in, in a way that makes sense to you. So now let's talk about emails. Um, email overload is a common source of distraction and frustration, frustrations. Um, you know, I, I see loads of times that people have hundreds, if not thousands of emails on their inbox and they are being constantly interrupted with notification, with pings and, and alerts and pop-up messages. That, that, is, that is terrible. It's just a source of distraction. And also other thing that I see that is not very, uh, very good is people using emails as to-do lists. Um, it, it's, not, it's not productive. You can't do to-do lists based on, on your emails. So if you have emails that they need to have an action that is not just reply, make sure that you create a task on your task list to accomplish that one, okay? Other thing that is, is very common is just people replying to emails very quickly instead of thinking about the reply. So the more message you send, the more messages you will get. So that is just creates a spiral of messages back and forward so sometimes it's better to just take time to reply to email instead of just quick firing and, and, and then getting more uh, uh, emails back that you need to, to deal with them. So how do we solve this problem? There's a technique called Inbox Zero. This was introduced in 2007 by 
Burning Man. Uh, so the goal of Inbox Zero is to make your inbox as empty as possible. Ideally, no more than 10 emails or even zero emails by the end of the day. Okay, again, this technique can be used with any email client that you have, uh, Google Gmail, Apple Mail, Microsoft Outlook, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, the things that I'm going to talk later, uh, the features, Maybe they are different between email clients, but they all allow you to implement these things. So the first thing is, let's forget about complex folder structures to organize emails. Okay, I've, I've seen a lot of people with these massive complex folder structures with subfolders, and they spend hours just moving emails into those folders. Forget about it. We are not in the 1970s with you know, file cabinets, and we need to move papers into file cabinets. Uh, these email clients nowadays, they have very powerful search tools that they can search for anything. They can even search inside documents attached to your emails. So stop wasting your time in organizing uh, files uh, and, and, and just use the search um, function to find what you need. So. If you are one of these people that have this complex folder, just do me a favor, create an archive folder under your inbox and move everything inside there and just leave it. Forget about it. Use the search to find uh, things that you need next. So to implement inbox zero, what you need to do is just create one subfolder on your inbox. I call it done uh, and that's it. So create a subfolder called done. And now let's see how we're going to look at the emails uh, to, to move them and to process them. So other thing that we need to use to make our life easy is just create some rules, some automation to help move you emails around. So you don't need to drag and drop emails. You just need to create an automatic uh, rule that can move the selected email into that done folder. Again, depending on the email system that you have, this can be a two or three step process, but it's normally very easy to do and, and you can do it with a couple of clicks. The other thing that I want you to do is to create a, a, a view for your inbox in a way that we can make sense of the, of the emails. So we want to order the emails from oldest to new. So the new on top and the oldest on the bottom. We also want to group them by date so that you can have the today emails grouped together, the tomorrow emails grouped together and, and so on. And also we want to group them by flag. So when you flag an email, automatically your flagged email will be on top uh, of the new one. So you have all flagged emails on top, then the new email down to the oldest. Again, this depends on the client that you have, but it's normally very easy and simple to do. Okay, so when you implement all these things, now it's time to go and start clear up your inbox. So this is a good opportunity for you to practice time blocking. So make sure that you block some time in your calendar to go and do this task, because depending on the number of emails you have, this can take a couple of hours, if, if not um, one day to sort this thing out. So select your inbox folder, scroll down to the bottom, and now let's be ruthless, okay? You're going to delete any email that you have that is marketing, ads, spam. Don't worry about it. Just press the delete button and move them away from your inbox. Then you are probably going to find some emails that you subscribe to, and that's fine if that is something that you know it's useful for you and you read those emails just keep them but if you find some of those emails that you subscribe or you don't even subscribe but suddenly they are in your inbox just take the time to go and unsubscribe the time that it takes for you to unsubscribe now you will save that time later because you one less email in your inbox so keep the ones that are important to you unsubscribe the other ones. And then 
any email that you find on, 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 on your inbox that doesn't need to have an action because it's too old, because you already replied to it, because it's not relevant anymore, then you're going to use that uh, rule that you create that moves the emails to the done folder. So those ones, select them, right click, use the, the shortcut, and that email should be moved automatically to your done uh, folder. Okay, so then the other thing is let's use flags. So for those emails that you are going through your inbox, that they still are relevant, that you still need to do something to them, that there's an action, you want to flag them. So flag them with the priority that you think you need to it today, tomorrow, this week, next week, it doesn't matter. So just flag them. By flagging them, these emails are going to move to the top of your inbox folder. So they will be uh, top of your priority for you to deal with them. Okay. So by now, when you finish this, you should have your inbox folder completely clean of any no email that is not useful, that is done or processed, and you should just have emails that they need to have some action from you. Um, and, and then what you just need to do is just you need to start processing them as you go along. So because you flag them for today, tomorrow, next week, when is the time to process them? Go and process them. Other thing that... I mentioned already, and is very important, is remember that if there is an action that you need to do from those emails, make sure that you create a task for it so that you can then add that task to your time blocking. Don't just rely on your emails to do tasks because you are going to forget about it. So every time that a, an email requests a task, create that task, put on your list so that you can execute them. So we cover a lot of a lot of things. Um, I just want to go through a couple of of examples. And unfortunately, I can't share with you my my, my calendar and and my notes for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to give you uh, and talk about a couple of things that I do using these methods to make you probably get some inspiration for you to use. So in terms of tools, um, these are the tools that I use. I use Microsoft Outlook for more email and calendar is just um, a calendar and email system, nothing special with it. Uh, for notes, I use Notion. I used to use OneNote, but OneNote is getting a little bit old and, and rigid and is not you know, very modern and very flexible. So Notion for me is, is, is very good, very flexible. I can take notes and do task lists there. I can have that synchronized with all my devices and share with other people if I have to. Um, then I use another tool called monday.com. So this one is for more complex tasks, tasks that they need to have like follow-ups or they have steps to do, or do I need to collaborate with someone and then I need to have status and feedback about um, those tasks. So it's not, a project management, but it's it's quite for more complex tasks. Again, there's a lot of other tools out there, um, Trello, um, Asana, um, Slack, loads of them. It, it's completely up to you. Um, then I use Calendly. So Calendly is a tool to help to book meetings uh, for me. As you probably know, trying to book meetings with emails is a nightmare. It, it can end up with, I don't know, 10, 15 emails back and forward with people with availability. So I can do, no, I can't. It, it's, it's just a mess. So Calendly, I just send them a link with access to my calendar and that's it. They can just book whenever is um, available for them. So that sorts a lot of, a lot of time. Uh, other tool that I use is Loom. I don't know if you heard about Loom. So Loom is a recording uh, screen and also uses the webcam. So you can have your face in a circle on the screen. And I use this for feedback. 
So sometimes you have emails, people asking you things, requesting you for feedback, or you want to ask people to do things. If you just record a two, three minutes video showing, recording your screen, showing you what you want to do, explaining with your own voice, and people can see you, it's way easier than writing emails. And again, it cuts all that back and forward because you just record that video, send a link, people can watch it, and that's it. So that is a, a very good tool that I, that I use um, a lot. And a physical notebook. I still have one. I use it especially when I'm doing um, Zoom meetings, team meetings. It's not practical to type things on the keyboard. I just write things down. Uh, but what I do is when I finish the meeting, I just grab those notes, go into Notion, and then I put the notes there. So I use a little bit more, you know, I, I try to clarify things, make sure that the sentences are, are correct, because when you are just uh, jotting things down, sometimes it's a little bit confusing and, and clear. So, and, and that's it. So I don't use that notepad to go back and, and, and see what, uh, what I've done. It's just to taking notes. So in terms of time blocking, let me just give you um, an example of things that I do. So um, I normally wake up uh, between 6, 6.30, normally no alarms, just naturally. Um, I don't have small children anymore. So I like to start my day with a coffee and a chat with my wife. So every day I have a block between 6.30, 7.30, coffee. And that's it, is my morning ritual, have my coffee and chat with my wife. Then I like to go and exercise. And again, when I said about flexibility, I have different uh, times for exercise. In the summer, I like to exercise in the morning after my coffee. In the winter, it's too cold, too dark, rainy. I prefer to, to work out a little bit later in the day. So I have different schedules for different times of the year. So in the summer, I like to run and I do long runs and short runs. So two long runs and three short runs. So the long runs are from 7.30 to 10.30, the short run from 7.30 to 9. So those blocks is not, not just for me to go and run, is to grab my gear, go and run, uh, cool down when I, when I get home, have a shower, get dressed. So that block is for all those things. I don't have blocks to have a shower or to get dressed. It doesn't make any sense. So in the running block, I include all those tasks. Then meetings, um, for example, I just have meetings on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Mondays and Fridays are reserved for my deep work is when I don't want to get distracted. I just want to focus and do whatever I need to do. So for those three days from Tuesday to Thursday, I can have meetings between 11 and four o'clock and my Calendly is set up for those blocks. Another thing that Calendly is set up is to not allow to book meetings with less than 12 hours in advance. Why do I do that? Because when I get in the morning, then I know that the meetings I have in my calendar are the only meetings that I'm going to have today. No one is going to be able to add meetings on that day just because they want. If they want to book a meeting, it needs to be for tomorrow. So then I can adjust my calendar. And if I have spaces between meetings, I can then block those spaces to do other tasks. Normally, there are those shallow tasks, so tasks that they don't need much attention because I'm jumping from meeting to meeting. So my focus is not great. So it's the ideal time for me to do that type of work that you know I can just do things without uh, a lot of a lot of tension. So I hope these things help you to get some inspiration. Uh, I also hope that these techniques, time blocking, daily logging, and inbox zero also helps with your productivity. Um, if you need more information about that, if you don't know more, you can connect with me. I'm on the Enterprise uh, Nation portal, and you can also find me easily uh, on, on, on LinkedIn. So thank you very much for listening to me, and let's open uh, for any questions that you guys may have.
Thank you so much, Nini. That was um, amazing. Uh, great top tips there. Um, do you have any thoughts on boundaries when it comes to running a business? Boundaries? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I think it's very important to, you know, to, to stop working whenever, okay? It, it, I'm, I'm not saying that you need to work from nine to five. It, it's up to you how much time do you need to work or do you want to work, but you should stop it. Uh, okay, I've done that mistake in the beginning that I was working stupid hours, weekends, and I burn out and I almost went into depression. It's very easy uh, to get into that. So my recommendation is stop working. That's why I talk about that shutdown procedure because it's, it's a good way to end your work, forget about it and go and do something. You know, spend time with your family, with your friends, with yourself. Just relax because, you know, um, our attention and our focus is like a battery. Throughout the day, we drain that battery and we need to recharge it. If we don't recharge it throughout the night, next day, you're not going to be 100%. You go already be tired and you get into that vicious cycle of not being productive because you are tired and then you can't focus, you can't do things, it takes longer and so on and so on. Yeah, love that advice. Yeah, you definitely uh, do need rest as well in the evenings. Yeah. Um, we've had one question he's, uh, from someone who's asked, if you've pre-planned the week and the tasks keep overrunning past those allocated blocks, how do you manage that? How, how do you manage to rearrange that? So two things there. First, probably it means that you are not being able to estimate the correct amount of time to do your tasks. And that is very normal. We always underestimate things. You know, we underestimate the number of calories that we eat, the number of hours we sleep. So it, it, it's normal. Um, so you need to get better at estimate the times. And that's why the daily logging is a very powerful tool for you to really understand how much time are you spending things. So then making sure that the next time you will locate the correct time. Other thing that can happen is, you know, life is busy, complicated. People just interrupt us. And sometimes things take a little bit longer than we are expecting. That is not a problem. Um, you should always have some buffer in your day for times that you haven't blocked them. So you can then use those extra blocks to carry on your task to, to, to finish that task. And if you don't have time on that day, don't worry, move to the next day. Again, make that list so that your brain understands that you are not forgetting about it. Will, you will deal with it next day. Perfect. And do you think the sense of control over tasks is important in being productive? Uh, Absolutely. Um, I think, and that's why I like time blocking instead of just having task lists. When you just have task lists, you know, if it's like 10, 15, 25 tasks, your brain, it's difficult to focus on the things that you want to do. And it's easy to procrastinate and oh, I'll deal with that later. Oh, I don't fancy to do this now. So it's very easy to get into that, that type of, of, of of excuses when we block things you know you are you are putting a pressure on just doing those things and they can be smaller things so it's just two three tasks five tasks and we cope much better with that because we have the feeling that it's achievable it's just two or three things and when we do them we feel happy and and, and we can move on to the other one mm -hmm. so having control of the tasks for me is extremely important to make sure that you can succeed to complete those tasks. And how do you deal with urgent meetings and panics from say senior management that occur during the day? It's one question that we've had from an audience member. Yeah, so that, 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 that is a tricky one. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you are in that position that you have, you know, senior, manager, senior managers that they can interrupt you and, and um, you know, disrupt your day, um first thing is try to speak to them and try to explain them the costs of you being com 
interrupted by them. Okay, so when you start talking about money to senior manager, they will pay attention. Uh, and, you know, it's very easy. You can tell them how much you cost per hour. Uh, and, and if you are spending two, three hours per day doing something that wasn't unexpected, just because they want to, um, then they will start thinking about how to interrupt you. Yes, this is may not be easy. They may say, I don't care. That's why I pay you for. And, and well, in that case, th there's not much that you can do. Probably start looking for a better job where people <laughs> value your time because it's, 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 yeah, you, you can't do much about those interruptions. So mm. it's, a, it's a tough one. <laughs> Um, and we have another question. Someone's asking, I have attention deficit disorder and need to take breaks often during deep focus work. Um, should I include this in the daily login? Um, yeah, so that, that, that is an interesting, interesting one. So um, usually people can't focus for more than an hour. And although with practice, you can extend that. Okay, so the, the, the focus time, so your brain is like a muscle, you, you can train it. Uh, it. It takes time, but you can train it. Um, so for example, I can focus for two hours easily. Um, I can focus for more if I'm doing something that I really, really enjoy. Um, I can just go into this deep work mode and I'm completely blocked out and it can go for three to four hours easily. Uh, but that is because I've, I've trained a lot how to do this. So in the beginning, don't, don't force it, don't push it, okay? When, if you feel that you need a break, just do a break. My recommendation is the break should be just like get up, get some glass of water, some coffee, go to the toilet, walk a little bit and come back mm -hmm. to your task. Don't get the temptation to pick up your phone and check for emails or you know, or just check social media because that will be the trigger to push you away from what you should be doing. So do the breaks, but make sure that the breaks are really just the break and you can come back mm -hmm. to that in 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you need to. Even if you put an alert, uh, uh, you know, a, a timer that, you know, in five minutes it buzzes, you know, okay, break, finish, go back to work. Perfect. That's great advice. Um, I'll squeeze one final question in. Someone's mm -hmm. said, uh, so what kind of tasks do you normally let interrupt your organized day time blocks if you do let any interruptions? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so when, when I'm doing shallow work, so when I'm doing these tasks that they don't need my focus and my attention, I'm okay to be interrupted. I, I, I don't stress about it. So it's just when I'm doing deep work, the things that they need, my focus, my attention, those ones, I don't let anyone interrupt me. And, and you can have a lot of, uh, you know, cues to, to do that. Close the door, just put the sign on top of your monitor, say, don't interrupt me. Um, you know, th there's a lot of things that you can, you can do in the office to, to show other people that you are into that zone uh, period. So to avoid them to be interrupted. Make sure that you turn off all notifications on your computer, all those basic things. But for me, is the difference is that is deep work, no, no interruptions whatsoever. Shallow work, fine, I'm flexible, I can, I can deal with interruptions. It doesn't bother me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Nuno. That was uh, really insightful. We've had so much um, great feedback in the chat as well. Lots of uh, people saying how many helpful tips there are, things that they can take away with them for their business. Um, I've shared the link in the chat for everyone. Um, if you're able to just check out Tech Hub, take the diagnostic questionnaire, uh, you'll answer a series of questions and then receive personalized recommendations for your business. I'll be sending a follow-up email to everyone um, later today that will have the recording and further resources in there as well. But thank you so much, Nino, for sharing your insight and expertise with us. And I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. My pleasure. Thank you.